going back to our previous discussion on user versus technology design, uh, you got really three three main points in each. What not, what you shouldn't do. Or actually, there's four for the first one, and then for goal-oriented, cognitive, the right way of doing it. Can you walk us through each of those steps? Go technical first and then go the user design second. So when we talk about user-centered design, you know, there's, there's a couple of pitfalls there. The first of which is it's not just a matter of asking them what they want. They don't necessarily know what they need in order to be able to perform the task well. They have a lot of good information we need to get from them uh, about their requirements and about the decisions they're making and about the challenges in that environment. Um, but just having the users design it doesn't necessarily get you to where you need to go because they don't necessarily have the background in terms of what makes for effective visual information visualization. That's where we need the science of human factors to come into play. Um, the second pitfall is um, sometimes people think, oh, what we need to do is just filter out all this extra data. That if we automatically filter everything out for them to just the minimum set, that that's going to solve the problem. And really there's a lot of pitfalls in that. Um, the key problem there is that um, what people have to do to build situation awareness is they need to project. They need to know what's coming down the line. And if it's just this one little bit of data just when they need it, then they're not able to do that effective um, projection that they need to do. The other problem, which is kind of related to that, is there's this very fine line between doing something for somebody and doing something to them. So if your display is constantly jerking about between this information and that information, people get very disoriented very quickly. Um, you know, we, we saw examples of that where your uh, display would so suddenly shift on you and say, oh, looks like you want to write a letter. You know, that, that really is problematic when automation is jumping in and, and automatically changing things on you. So we try to avoid that. And, and you really want to avoid situations where the system is just going to try to make decisions for you. Uh, we've done a lot of research on this, and it turns out that it's really very difficult for people to understand what is the system doing? Why does it want to do that? Um, and then having to go back and, and try and correct it and change it, uh, that actually can slow down performance. So we find the best way to improve performance is to improve your situation awareness. Then people can be very effective decision makers, uh, but don't necessarily try to make decisions for them. So we try to avoid those approaches in our, in our design. What we do try to do is to, one, organize the information around the user's goals and tasks. So everything you need for a particular goal or particular decision is right there in one place. Most of the systems I've gone into, you really do have to look in five or six different places to find what you're looking for. You, that's, that's the sign of a technology-centered design. Everything you need should be really organized around what the user is trying to do. Um, secondly, you need to support how people are making decisions and processing information. We have a lot of good information on what people are good at, what they're not good at. So a lot of displays, for instance, require people to remember, you know, Ten, a 10 letter code over here and then type it in somewhere else. That's, that's crazy. That's not the kind of thing people are good at. Um, those are the kinds of things the computer should be doing for you. Um, it should help you understand how to allocate your attention. Um, a lot of displays, they've decided, well, we've got all these colors, let's use them all. And it's pretty soon it looks like what I call the Las Vegas Strip scenario. You know, it's everything is every color, flashing lights, everything's vying for your attention. And it's really hard to focus out all of that stuff to focus in on the part that's really important. So uh, we really um, emphasize using salient features, things like flashing lights and bright colors, very sparingly and only for really key and critical information. Um, so there's a lot of principles like that that can be applied to really support how people process information effectively. And then the third thing that's, I think, a very important guiding principle is keeping the user in control and in the loop. Um, one of the reasons I started working on situation awareness originally was problems with um, automation. And we know that when you introduce automation, people can get out of the loop where they don't really, aren't, don't really understand what the system is doing and they're, they're slower to respond to a problem and to be able to diagnose what's happening when they do respond. And this really comes down to the fact that they've become passive uh, processors of information. So uh, when people are pass passively viewing information, they don't really understand it as well as when they're actively doing it. A good example is this, if, if you've ever been to a party with someone where they drove and you were the passenger, at the end of the night you find out you're the one that's got to drive home, you don't really have the same understanding of well, how did we get here as if you'd been the one driving. And, and that's, that's really what happens to us with automation. We become the passenger in the car with automation. So what we really shoot for is not a lot of automation trying to do things for people, but keeping people in control uh, if making those decisions and use the automation to help do uh, routine, repetitive tasks that people shouldn't have to do. So we look for users in control and in the loop. 
and using automation in assistive ways that make sense. Yeah, the, the, the technical uh, uh, design is it's, it's just it's, it's well intended. It, it, you, could, you can see why we do it it's so easily. I, hey, I want to give them what they, they're paying for it. I want to give them what they ask for. I want to do this for them. I want to do that for him and her. And, you know, when you start looking back at your user design, which is really what people don't really, you know, got to bring it back to objectives and goals. You know, what are your, what are your tasks? What, what are your, what are the, what are the uh, I guess, expected outcomes? Um, I think, you know, in our industry, and in, I think a lot of industries, specifically around niche industries, usually what happens, you get an expert that gets in there, and then the expert starts creating a software company. <laughs> And that person or that group of people aren't, to your point, have the cognitive or human sciences behind it. That they're not software people. They just know that they have this information or this system that could sell it and it would be easier for them with the way they're doing it now. I think it's led us down a, a garden path that we're just, our industry is full of, of, of software that's, that's not really usable in the industry. 